Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to an unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Uh, on Tuesdays, we talk about current events, and on Thursdays, we, we like to talk a little bit more about a previous study you've given and or things related to the Bible. Uh, today, I want to ask, Pastor, last week you, uh, last Sunday, you spelled out for us the true mark of discipleship. And in Mark chapter 8, verse 34, you said, if any, the Bible says, if anyone wa- if any would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And so we know that a true follower of Christ is someone who clearly sees that it will cost to follow Jesus. Uh, I wanted to ask you, how has this cost to follow Jesus, how has it been cheapened today? You know, that's a, that's a good question. It's really a, a very, very important question, and especially in our age, because... It seems that sometimes the point of a of a message uh, is to get an emotional response from the hearer. So a touching story or a um, sad memory, something that will draw from people a, a, an emotional response may be used at the uh, conclusion of a message and then the tearful come to Jesus moment occurs and and instead of basing your your message on just a clear presentation of man's need for God and the requirements of of uh, repentance and confession and all of those things, we end up appealing to emotion. And Jesus never did that. Jesus would not give a, a an emotional plea because he knew that emotions will die after a while and. And that kind of an invitation, if you will, isn't going to produce lasting fruit. And so when Jesus was speaking to his men there in the Gospel of Mark in chapter 8, he had made it clear to them that uh, he was going to to be uh, tried by the uh, Jewish uh, uh, priests and all, and that he was going to die and be raised from the dead. And and the Apostle Peter didn't want to hear that, neither did any of the other men. And, and that's why he says in, in Matthew's Gospel, let this thing be far from you, that you should die. And that's why Jesus spoke to him and said to him, get thee behind me, Satan, you're an offense to me. You savor the things of man and not of God. And so the idea that Jesus would lay his life down and die was very difficult. But then he went on to say, you're going to do the same. You know, if any man desire to come after me, um, he's to die also. There, there is a, there is a mentality of a full commitment to the end. He never called us to be part-time followers, but full-time disciples, and leaving those things behind and pursuing that which is in front of us. Right, and so, I believe that 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 invitation has been watered down in many ways, and so. The demands of discipleship, the picking up of a cross daily, you know, the instrument of torture and death and shame, picking it up daily and following him, as Luke adds in his account of the same same teaching. I believe that that has been watered down to the point where people think that that uh, just saying yes at an invitation means I got saved. But in fact, that does happen. I do believe that that people receive Christ. I wouldn't give an invitation if I didn't believe that. But when you water down the the call that Jesus gave and you make it into something like he'll he'll give you a blessed day or you're going to be healthy and you're going to be you're going to be wealthy and and things of that that nature appealing to the flesh and the greed of man and the fear of man and the sense of I want to always be healthy. Well, you end up with people who look at at uh at the gospel as kind of an insurance policy of some mm. sort that I'm going to benefit from if, if I just just agree to sign on the dotted mm. line. And so what happens is you have watered down messages and you produce people who, who are believing themselves to be saved when in fact they've never confessed their sins. They've never forsaken them. They've never repented. They've never said, God, be merciful to me. Fill me with your spirit. They don't develop a hunger for the Word of God. They don't get involved in fellowship. And they still live in the same lifestyle they did before. They live in fear. 
or they live in in uh, a variety of ways and and uh, so yeah I think that today the the gospel as it goes forth sometimes is really not the true gospel but rather an invention of man I like what you said uh, these are some of the the quotes that you you made in um, in our last study last Sunday regarding this cheapened discipleship quote all you have to do is just be good avoid the cross and uh, you'll make it to heaven uh, another one is faith that costs nothing is worth nothing well you know Satan basically who was inspiring the uh, Apostle Peter's words uh, that's basically what he was saying he was in Peter's advice to Christ was don't go to the cross let this thing be far from you but for this purpose he came Jesus came to lay his life down um, for us. He's the Lamb of God. And so for Peter to say, don't do it, and that's why Jesus would say, get thee behind me, Satan, adversary, opponent. Um, your, your mind a moment ago was inspired by the Spirit when, when you said you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's why Jesus had said, blessed are you, Simon, and Bar Simon Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. You were inspired by God's spirit, but now Satan has interposed in your mind um, something contrary to that. The inspiration of your thought was not from God, but was actually from the, the adversary, from Satan. And that's why he says, get thee behind me, because your influence is going to not only bleed over to, to others, but it, it could go further than just this, this circle here around me. So no. You get behind me because Jesus came in order to fulfill the will of his Father, which was to embrace a cross. So, you know, we, th we hear this uh, commandment for discipleship. And, and then we also hear, what will man give in exchange for his yeah, soul? Yeah. And so there is a cost either way. We either sold out and, and live for Christ or we live in this cheapened discipleship, this cheapened grace that... That doesn't cost anything. Well, you know, yeah, that's the, that that's that very famous quotation from Dietrich Bonhoeffer: "Cheap grace, a grace that costs nothing, a grace that costs nothing." And there are quite a number of people who don't understand the depth of grace, the cost of grace, and the things related to grace, because again, uh, and I'm sad to say this is the truth, but it, it's it's not a pleasant thing to say, but there there are quite a number of of places called churches with pastors who don't teach the word uh, who are caught up it seems sometimes to just try and fill the pews mm. you know to get the finances to be able to to become popular i guess you know and uh, you know you, you 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 don't serve god like that you you don't profit off the, the the gospel. You just don't. There's blessings and benefits of following Christ, but you certainly don't preach the message to be admired by man and become wealthy and become famous. John, you, you preach a, a, a costly cross, you know, a, a, because discipleship is costly. Yeah, so what will... It profit a man if he should gain the world and lose his soul. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Those are merchandise terms, profit and loss and gain. You know, those Jesus was saying in, in, in ways that had a material sense to him that the follower of Christ is one who loses to gain. You know, it, it may seem that in the, in the dying to myself that I'm, I'm losing, and in fact I am, I'm losing myself, but I'm also gaining a new, a new self, you know, a reborn self, a, a new life, a new value system, and a new final destination. And so what will it profit a man if he, if he, if he would gain everything? You know, you and I just yesterday, I had to take my car in for an oil change, and, <laughs> and as we were walking past the the parking lot and all these beautiful cars and I happen to be someone who appreciates the beauty of a of a, of a, a car I, I have always appreciated it, but I look at it in many ways as 
is like a piece of art. There's no way I'm going to try and purchase something like that. But remember, yes. we were looking at a Corvette, you know, a 2020. It was a used model. It's two years old. And how much were they? They were charging $143,000 for that. And uh, what would it profit a man to be able to drive that Corvette and still go to hell? I mean, what does it profit you to be able to to drive a beautiful car that you're constantly concerned about that somebody might swing their door in and nick the paint or you might get in an accident or somebody may steal it. You know, that's why Jesus taught us. He said, you lay your treasures up in heaven. And so there's an eternal perspective that we must have. And I believe that it, it, it's a perspective many Christians don't have. Hmm. You know, an interesting pastor, and we'll close with this, that Jesus is using business terms uh, but yet he uses loss and profit and profit and gain and loss and gain uh, in the same sense for loss and gain, but with an eternal result, oh, yeah. right. which probably didn't make sense to the businessmen. If you think about, you know, the loss, uh, if, if you lose your life, you'll gain it. You know, thinking, okay, well, but Jesus was not thinking, obviously, with a, a mind that's, that is uh, earthly minded, but a heavenly perspective. Yeah, he said that's what he came to do is to give us a glimpse of what was awaiting us. And, you know, I, I thank God for the beauty of the blessings he gives to us now. I thank God for a home to live in. Mm. I thank God for friends. I thank God for my wife, my children, my grandchildren. I thank God for so many things that have material substance and value. Of course I do. God is the giver of every good gift, you know, and I bless him for that. But he would not have me to fasten my eyes on things below. My eyes are to be fastened on the things above, you know, and so... If I, if, I, if I understand I'm a pilgrim, that I'm a sojourner, you know, I, I am just passing through, and I, I use things, but I don't let those things use me. Uh, it, when I understand that, um, I have freedom. But if I, I work so hard, because one day I'm going to hopefully be able to buy that boat, get that cab, and take that trip, uh, that one who I'm married to may not survive long enough to ever enjoy those things. Mm -hmm. And that's why I share with the church the most important thing that I've discovered in life is relationship. It's relationship. You know, because home to me is not the house I live in. I thank God for it. But home to me is wherever my wife is, mm -hmm. wherever my, my Maria is, I'm home. Because she is, um, to me, w what life matters on earth because as a gift from God, I have the ability to have a, a woman that, that shares this with me. But without her, then what good would it be? Right. What, what does it matter if I have that Corvette, if I'm driving with nobody in the passenger seat, John? You know, and as I'm growing older, I've been saying this to our church, it becomes more real. It becomes more settled in my heart that... Um, I'm just passing through, and the only thing that matters at the end is, uh, is relationships with God and encouragement uh, to others to have a relationship with Him and to re have, have relationships in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, for yeah. that. That's a, uh, this was a good conversation. I, I you know, really enjoyed the, the, the teaching you gave on this. Uh, with that, I want to invite you guys to come out to our Sunday morning services, 8.30 and 10.45, as you're still taking us through the book of Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, great opportunity. I'm not going to spill the beans, but you were sharing with, something with me earlier that you were yeah. working on. And so uh, you guys got to come on out. And great surprises your... this <laughs> Sunday. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. You guys got to come on out for that. You're not going to want to miss this. So come on out, invite your friends and family. Uh, then Wednesday. We have the Katinas coming the Katinas. out. Katinas. They're going to lead us in worship. They're actually going to take over the whole night. And giving them tonight. That's going to be amazing. Uh, invite your friends and family to come out. I mean, they harmonize so well. They're, the, they're beautiful. I just love these guys. So, guys, come on out. And so we look forward to seeing you. Thank you for tuning in. Pastor David, thank you so much. Of course. God bless you guys.